Which is more important, the coronal seal or the apical seal? The answer to this question is discussed in the research by Ray and Trop in 1995 and this research literally turned the world of aeronautics upside down. Ray and Trop basically set out to discuss what is more important, the coronal seal or the apical seal and they designed a study where they studied 1010 root canals retrospectively in the form of x-rays. They decided that a good aeronautic restoration or a good endo would involve an obturation that went up to 2 mm from the apex and a good coronal restoration would be one that had no gaps and no overhangs, no decay and no signs of any problems such as that. So in this study when they looked at these x-rays they saw that a good aeronautic treatment along with a good coronal restoration led to an absence of periapical lesions in 91% of cases. Now why that's a really important number is that is kind of like what the statistic is globally so that tells that this study is valid and its research is reliable. The second test group was good endo and poor restoration. Now what's interesting is here we can see that that percentage was only 44%. That means only 44% of teeth did not have periapical lesions when they had a good RCT but a poor post coronal restoration. And in the same case when they had poor aeronautic treatment or a poor root canal and a good restoration it was all the way up to 68%. Now could this mean that good endo with any restoration was worse than any endo with a good restoration? And that is the shocking revelation of this article. The salient features that we take from the study are number one, coronal restorations are super important. Whether you're temporizing or whether you're doing permanent restorations, it's really important for the success of your treatment. Secondly, coronal restoration serves in a form of entombment kind of prevents any nutrition or any new bacteria to come inside the root canal and that itself gives the chance for the root canal to succeed in the long term. On top of that, if a GP is exposed, it's probably better to re-clean that canal completely. Thirdly, your best case situation is good endo with a good restoration because that is the only thing that provides you predictable results and you cannot base your career on just doing amazing restorations and being okay with a 50-50 chance of success. Now, like any research, this research cannot be taken without a pinch of salt. There are a couple of drawbacks to this methodology. Number one, there were only two examiners. Ideally, there should have been a third examiner to have a tiebreaker in the case that there was discussion about which case falls where. Secondly, there was no inclusion of the pre-operative status of these teeth. So we don't really know if it perfectly correlates. I mean, there could have been a lot of periapical resorption in certain cases, and we don't know how that affects these results. And thirdly, there is no indication for the amount of time that was uh, recorded between the time of the final obturation and the conducting of this study. I hope you guys found this interesting enough to share, like and subscribe to. Thank you so much and don't forget to be awesome.